Well, let's talk about things that we're really interested in learning at training camp this year. Because you always learn something. You're going to be there watching for yourself. What are you interested in learning? Man, I, I think there's a, a lot to take away from this year's training camp. And it, normally it's like the quarterback thing that, that takes the center stage for sure. This year we don't have that. But there is a lot of things that we need to know about this team. I, you, want, you want to go back and forth? Or do you want me to go off like the 10 things that, that I think are interesting this well, year? Well, we can go back and forth. Okay. So I'll, I'll go with the first one. First one, top of my mind, is D-line depth. What does it look like? Who's going to start? What's the rotations? And how deep is the defensive line? I think when this team has been at its best, it's been when the def defensive line has been dominant and also had a great rotation of players. That's one thing that Kosarek does throughout the game. It really doesn't matter who the names are. He's going to rotate his players in and out. They've got to have big-time depth, and they have to be better than what they have trended to be as a unit over the last couple of years. So I'm curious to see what the D-line depth looks like, especially now that Armstead's gone and they've brought in a couple new players. Okay, I'm going to stick with that. I love the idea of looking at the D-line depth. Training camp is great to get a good look, first up-close look at players who don't play very much. But also, like, I want to look at Trent Williams and Nick Bosa. Mm. Now, neither of those guys did anything last year. Bosa was gone. Yeah. Trent Williams decided not to practice. If Bosa's back... Will Trent Williams decide, like, will you practice once, man? Like, because it'll make you, it'll make, forget you. You're the best, all right? You're the best. It'll make Bosa better. And you guys used to do that. When you, when, when Bosa was younger, when Trent Williams was younger, they would do at least a couple of days of one-on-one -on -one drills, and they didn't do it that much, but it, it definitely made Bosa better. I've never seen Bosa win against Trent Williams. After every time that he loses, he gives Trent a little pat in the helmet, like, thank you. Because he appreciates who else is going to yeah. give Bosa that look. Bosa is the main reason that defense fell off. They can blame Steve Wilkes, but when you get a guy who goes from defensive player of the year to not even all pro and has like half the sacks, that's the difference. So I'd like to see those two suited up once or twice, man, for the team. Yeah, that would actually be a lot of fun. We didn't get that at all. You're right, because Bosa wasn't there, and then Trent hardly does practice, which is yeah. fine. I mean, he's, you know, 35, 36. We know get how good it. you are. Understood. <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean, it's about your teammates. And this is the same thing we were talking about with tipping plays, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever, man. It doesn't hurt you individually, but it's not helping the right tackle. <laughs> it's not helping the rest of the offensive line pick up the, the, the unblocked blitzer off the other side. I mean, these are things that, you 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 are a great individual player, man. But you're a captain also, so it'd be nice if you just practice once. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think I, I mean, if we want to stick with the old line, I think that's interesting as well. What does the rotation look like there? Yep. Is the, is there a true competition? Because to me, really, center all the way over to right tackle. I think all of those positions should be up for grabs, depending on who performs the best. I mean. Feliciano can play right guard center. You just drafted Pooney. Um, what are the options? I mean, there's like three or four options you can go with at center. I mean, there's so many different rotations. Burford's there. Brindell has knee tendonitis. I mean, I don't know. There, I just think that should all be open for competition, center to right tackle, and may the best man win. Um. I love that we didn't go straight to this, but frankly, Vic, this is the number one story until it's not. B.A. Watch. Oh, for uh, sure. We can, yes. It's, it's self-explanatory. We don't have to belabor because we've been talking about him the whole time, but like every yeah. day, is he here? Was he in meetings? Is he showing up? Has he shown up? Is he going to show up? Has anyone talked to him? What, what is his state of mind? How are his emotions? Mm -hmm. How does he feel? All that stuff, which sucks. Uh, and what it's not what I want to cover. It's not what the team wants to be covered, but that's the news. I mean, really, like, nothing it that is. happens in practice is news. It's inside football stuff that fans love to know, but Brandon Ayuk wasn't there again today. That's the news. So, BA watch. No, that's, that's I'm not a very interested good point. in it, but that's what I have to talk about. We have to talk about it. No, it's a very good point. And then on the flip side of that is the rookie wide receivers, Pierce Hall and Cowing. I mean, if BA is not going to be there, can one of these guys step up? Now we're going to see them against number one corners, Traverius Ward, Diamador Lenore. What does it look like then? And are they showing improvement? Even if it doesn't look great early, that's okay. But you want to see them show that improvement day in and day out. I don't care what Pearsall does against Ambry Thomas or 
looter or whoever that isn't a starter on this team. Let me see him in those reps against the number one corners, and then I'll decide what I'm seeing. And so I, I think those matchups are going to be interesting as well. Talking about Pearsall, I mean, one, obviously, how good is he going to be on a day to day basis? But first, can you say healthy? Is he? No, 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 no. Oh, He's point. hurt. He's hurt now, so will he be hurt in a week? If so, what's the injury? Because they'll have to say they'll they'll give once they start practicing, they'll give daily injury reports. So what's the deal? Can he play? When's he coming back? And then if Brandon comes back, what kind of shape is he in? Is he in football shape? I'm sure he's in like you know four percent body fat shape, but like is he in football shape? Does he pull a hamstring the first week? Is he the same route run runner he was last year? Because we all thought last year. Nick Bosa missing all the training camp would be, oh, who cares? Ha, ha, ha. He's in great shape. He No, it mattered. It absolutely affected his play, and then he talked about it. Uh, so what's up with Brandon? Yeah, it doesn't matter how good you are, how hard of a worker you are. It does impact you. I mean, I don't think there's many people across the NFL that work harder than Bosa in the offseason. They always talk about how he's a consummate pro and he's working his butt off. Everybody thought if there's anybody that can avoid having a letdown after missing all of camp, it would be somebody like Bosa. And turns out that's not the case. I mean, everybody yeah. needs those reps. And so, yeah, I am curious to see when he comes back, what it looks like. You know, and here's the other thing, too. It's a story if he's there and he's not practicing. Like, does he do the hold in? Does he do the hold out? I'll say this BA. You requesting a trade week prior to veterans arriving and the day that essentially rookie camp started, I think you can't be there in person. You can't do the hold in. You, you certainly can't practice. Like You can't be taken seriously if that's the route you're going to take and then you're just there. <laughs> you either requesting a trade or you're not. You know what I mean? So I'm curious to see how he plays it. I think Debo Samuel's an underrated person to watch this year. Sort of sure. the forgotten guy. You're, you're looking at younger guys, but like Brandon is upset and he wants more from the 49ers and he essentially wants to push Debo off the team because it's not mu enough money for both of them. Uh, so Debo's response has been not to get upset, not to pout, uh, to show up to OTAs in minicamp and to actually practice. So it seems to me like Debo is approaching this year like it's a contract year for him. Like I know he's he's under contract for two more years, but this could be it. He could be cut. Who knows? He could be freaking cut next year on the open market negotiating for another contract. So good to put your best foot forward and not just be in your best shape and practice hard every day, but like lead and talk and really drive the freaking point home that you're so much better and more professional and more essential to the team than Brandon since he wanted to take it there. I'm curious to see about Debo because it seems like that's how he's moving this year. Yeah, he definitely seems to be moving a little bit differently and it's good to see. I think another thing that's interesting, Talanoa Funga. I mean, he's the mm. first guy out every single day in practice, right? Well, almost every day. Jair Brown kind of did it a few times last year, but he really is that first guy in, last guy out mentality coming off of a major injury. But he's also been an all-pro and was just two short years ago. We saw the run defense at times last year really struggle. How much of that was because he wasn't there? Can he overcome a major injury and be the same player he was two years ago? He has a lot on the line. I mean, he's going to be a free agent also at the end of the year. He's trying to get paid. I'm curious to see what his uh, tone is, what his demeanor is, how he looks athletically. There were times last year where he shut down almost every tight end he went against in one-on-ones. I'm curious to see if he still has that same ability. That's a really good one. Also, Nick Sorensen watched to me. He's going to talk. Oh, good point. I mean, like, it's not just like what's his demeanor and practice, but it's like, how do you comport yourself in these press conferences, man? Like, what is your uh, gravitas, energy, all of that? Because I don't know, man. I mean, it seems like if it doesn't go so well early on, he could get fired at the bye week. Remember last year when the Niners were clearly upset with Steve Wilkes at the bye week and all they could do was change where he called plays? I, I think if the Niners feel similarly about Nick Sorensen at the bye week, they're not going to change. They're not going to move him from the sideline to the. They're going to move him out of the building and Brandon, I, uh, Brandon Staley will replace him. So 
he doesn't have a whole lot of time to prove himself. Is he going to create a, a good first impression? Some days I feel like he can. Some days I feel like, who is this guy? Other days I'm like, no, no, he's a former player. He's got some energy. He seems pretty authentic. I'm open-minded. Yeah, it's it's really tough to gauge coaches. I, I remember last year, Wilkes was super energetic in practices. I mean, I know that you said it's more like press conferences and what's his demeanor there, but from a practice standpoint and, and being hands-on, I mean, I don't think anybody was more hands-on than Wilkes. He was constantly coaching, constantly trying to work with the players and get them to be better, but that didn't necessarily translate or, or parlay into the season. You would think that he's getting in there with the players like, that would mean something, but clearly it meant nothing. So <laughs> also Staley is interesting. Like yeah. Sor- Staley's almost more interesting than Sorensen if you think about it. Because Sorensen is like who the Niners want you to look at. They're like, this is our guy. Look at the defensive mm-hmm. coordinator. But there's mm-hmm. this other guy behind the curtain that they don't really want you to talk about. But when you watch practice, you'll be there. It's like, okay, so what's Sorensen doing and what's Staley doing? Is there really a difference? Yeah. When I was watching an OTAs in minicamp, I would see, I would see um Sorensen had the walkie-talkie calling plays, and he was behind the offense next to Kyle. Okay, yeah. Staley was on the sideline interacting with each player one-on-one. So mm. who's... Well, obviously, one guy's the play caller, but the other guy has a lot of one-on-one contact with the players. Maybe more. So that's interesting. Like, What, what does Staley actually do that the Niners don't want us to know that he does? Because they're never going to talk about it. No. No, they're de- they're definitely not. I am curious to see how that plays out. I think for me, the last thing that I'm really looking forward to is they say they want to get CMC some rest this year. They seem to also have some pretty capable backs last year that they weren't willing to do that with. A couple of those names are returning. We obviously have Mason and we have Elijah Mitchell, but they've brought in two rookies. What does it look like behind CMC? Who can step up and kind of take over? that number two spot, and then who's cut. That's going to be interesting for me as well. I like that. Also, finally, the quarterback. Like, I don't think Brock has a ton to prove in camp. Mm. Like, he objectively had a bad camp last year, and it didn't matter at all. It didn't. He had a a great year. So if he goes out and has another bad camp, it won't necessarily be big news or indicative of anything. Uh, But the backup quarterbacks, Dobbs, Brandon Allen, and Mordecai, is one of them good? Because what if Brock Pur I mean, quarterbacks get hurt all the time. Most starting quarterbacks get hurt, not just on the 49ers. So if he ha- ends up missing six games, are the Niners okay? I don't know. I mean, from what I saw in Josh with in Josh Dobbs and OTAs and minicamp, I wasn't he didn't look great in, in practice. Maybe he's a gamer. But once the pass is more than five yards down the field, like that's he's scattershot. And Brandon Allen, I'm sorry, like. Maybe I'm just being dismissive because he's 32, but I, I, we're going to need to see if there's a, because last year they talked so much about how important it was to have backup quarterbacks because in 2022, they went through literally four of them. Now it's like, well, we haven't had an injury in uh, 12 months, so that's not an issue anymore. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Because you could have had Trey Lance. I I hate to bring him up all the time, but like you could have had Trey Lance and you decided to trade him for a fourth round pick who is now Malik Mustafa. So. Is it better to have Malik Mustafa and Josh Dobbs and Brandon Allen, or so we'll, we'll see? Well, if first of all, if Brock Purdy's going to miss six games, then <clears throat> hopefully Ryan Tannehill's still a free agent. I think he's available. I would probably <laughs> be reaching out to Ryan Tannehill very, very quickly. Yeah. I think he's a more capable player than all of them, um, at least as show point. me be at some point. So that's what I would probably be doing. But yeah, I mean, it does matter. It it does matter to a certain extent. It probably won't get a ton of coverage, but it will be talked about. And if they all look awful, that's not good. No, not good at all. Another one occurred to me. Just popped in my head out of nowhere. Okay. Linebacker position. Okay. So oh look, yeah, I had it written down. Greenlaw it's filling. Important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. So yeah. Fred Warner, great player, right? But Drake Greenlaw goes down the Super Bowl, and all of a sudden, Orrin Burke slides into that spot next to Fred Warner, and the Niners' defense can't stop anything. And a lot mm-hmm. of people feel that's the difference in the Super Bowl. If Greenlaw had been healthy, the Niners would have won. But he went down, and the Chiefs just destroyed Orrin Burks. Okay, Orrin Burks is gone, and now in his place is Devondre Campbell. Is that is that an upgrade, or is he just the next guy who's going to get torched and covered? Like. I don't know. The Packers straight up cut him. They're like, thanks, man. Thanks for everything. We're better off without you. So 
Or or is it D Winters? Is it someone we don't know? Jalen Graham who steps up because I think it's really important. It was important in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, it was extremely important. And you know, we'll see what what Devondre Campbell ends up being. But I he was talking the same way on the internet this time last year that he he is this year, where it's like, oh, finally the fresh start that I need. And he's was praising the Green Bay Packers last year. Like, oh, thank God I'm here. Like, these guys are great. Like, finally, I get to get back to my normal self. And then it's a year later. It's like, oh, it was awful there. Finally, I get a chance with the 49ers. I was like, well, maybe you're just washed. That's a possibility. I'm not saying he is, but that could be true. And we'll find I, out. 